Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome back to GetChemistryHelp.com. This is Dr. Kent, and our lesson today is going to be on the metric system and conversions. Um, specifically, we're going to deal with converting between various metric units. Now, the metric system was created in the late 1700s by the French. Basically, it was created in response to the English system, which was, quite frankly, just fairly confusing. So, for example, the English system would use inches, feet, yards, miles, all of these different units just for length. And it was never the same number. It would be 12 inches and a foot, but 3 feet and a yard, but 5,280 feet and a mile. And it was so confusing. So what basically happened was the French commissioned a committee, and over the course of about 10 years, they eventually created a standardized uniform system, which we call the metric system. Now the metric system is nice because it has one basic unit for length, and that's the meter. So instead of inches, feet, yards, and miles, it's always meter. They have one basic unit for mass, and that's the gram. So again, instead of ounces, pounds, and tons, it's always some multiple of the gram. For volume, the basic unit is the liter. So rather than cups and tablespoons, teaspoons, quarts, pints, gallons, everything is some variation of the liter. And for time, they use the second. Now the way they make a meter larger or smaller, or a gram larger or smaller, or a liter or a second, is they use prefixes. So the metric system is a straight up decimal system. So that means it has a ones place, but it also has tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. And then it has less than ones. It has tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, etc. So the way you know whether to make it larger or smaller is by a prefix. And depending on which prefix you combine with those basic unit, that tells you if you increase it or you decrease it and how much you increase it. But it's always a factor of 10. Again, it's not like the English system where it's 12 feet in a, I mean 12 inches in a foot, but three feet in a yard. It's always going to be some multiple of 10. So again, we're going to use prefixes. So here's a list of the most common prefixes. There are some more prefixes that are larger and smaller, but these are the most common ones. So they range all the way from tera, which means a trillion, all the way down to femto, which is super tiny. It means 10 to the negative 15th. So you can see right in here is the base unit, your basic meter, liter, or gram. All of these are larger than the base unit because they're positive exponents. All of these down here are less than that. They're less than one because they're negative exponents. Okay, so let's just see how that would work. So what would a kilogram be? Kilogram. Okay, kilo. So I abbreviate kilo with K. So I would write K, abbreviate gram with G. So kilogram. Okay, what would a kilogram be? How many grams is a kilogram? Well, kilo means 10 to the third. So a kilogram is 10 to the third grams. So literally, kilo means 10 to the third. Kilogram, 10 to the third grams. How about gigameter? Okay, giga is capital G. So capital G, how about meter? Well, meter is lowercase m. So a gigameter is capital G, lowercase m. Well, what does that mean? How many meters is that? Well, giga is 10 to the ninth. So a gigameter is 10 to the ninth meters. So giga means 10 to the ninth. How about microliter? Okay, micro has an interesting prefix. It's based off the lowercase Greek letter mu. And it looks kind of like a U with an extra long tail. So microliter, micro is this U with the extra long tail. Liter is capital L. Microliter, what does micro mean? Oh, micro means 10 to the negative 6. So a microliter is 10 to the negative 6 liters. How about our last one here? Millisecond. Okay, we peek back. Milli is lowercase m. So I'd put m and second is s. So ms, millisecond. And that means, what's milli mean? Milli means 10 to the negative third. So 10 to the negative third. 10 to the negative third seconds. So micro is 10 to the negative sixth. Milli is 10 to the negative third. Okay, now notice 
since the prefix was on the left, the exponent had to be on the opposite side. And that is the case for all of these. So whenever you are converting a metric unit and its base unit like this, if the prefix is on one side, the exponent has to be on the opposite side. Prefix on the left, exponent's on the right. If the prefix is on the left, the exponent's on the right. They are always on opposite sides of the conversion factor. You will never have the exponent on the same side, never ever. So it will never be 10 to the negative third milliseconds equals a second, for example. That can't happen because the prefix and the exponent have to be on opposite sides. So, okay, keep that in mind and let's do a couple of conversions just to see how this works. Our first one says convert 4.29 ng, so something grams, into grams. Okay, 4.29 ng. Okay, let's go back and see what n means. n is nano. n is nano. And nano means 10 to the negative 9. Okay, so nanogram into grams. Well, nano means 10 to the negative 9. So is it 10 to the negative 9 nanograms is a gram? Or is it a nanogram equals 10 to the, ninth, 10 to the negative 9 grams? Well, nano is on the left, so nano means 10 to the negative ninth. So it's just one nanogram is negative 10 to the negative ninth grams. Okay, we'll put that in our conversion. That's a G. <laughs> so since nanograms is what we're starting with and we want it to cancel, as we saw in our lesson on unit conversions, whatever unit we want to cancel has to go on the opposite. So it's on top here, has to go on the bottom here, which means grams will go on top. So it's one nanogram on the bottom. 10 to the negative ninth grams on the top. So we cancel out nanograms and we get 4.29 times 10 to the negative ninth, negative ninth grams. Okay, great. Let's try one more. This problem says convert 7.624 times 10 to the third centimeters into megameters. Now there isn't a direct conversion from centi to mega because it always has to go through the base unit. In our case, the base unit is the meters. So let's just write this problem out and see what we can do. 7.624 times 10 to the third centimeters. So I'm going to turn centimeters into the base unit meters, and then I can turn that base unit into this prefix, megameters. So we need to go centimeters into meters first. So let's peek back here. So what's centi mean? Centi is C, and that means 10 to the negative second. So the question is centimeters. Is it 10 to the negative second centimeters equals a meter? Or is it a centimeter is 10 to the negative second meters? Okay, again, since the prefix is over here, the exponent has to be on this side. Centi means 10 to the negative second. So just be one centimeter equals 10 to the negative second meters. So if we're going to convert that, we want centimeters to cancel, so it has to go on the bottom. So one centimeter on the bottom, 10 to the negative second meters on the top. Great. Now we're in meters, and we want to go to megameters. So we're in meters, and we want to go to megameters. Okay, what's mega mean? Well, mega is capital M, and it means 10 to the negative, 10 to the 6, 10 to the positive 6. So is it 10 to the 6 meters is a megameter, or is it a meter is 10 to the 6 meters? Okay, well, where is the prefix at? The prefix is on the right side, so the exponent has to go on the opposite side, the left side. So mega means 10 to the 6, so just be 1 megameter. So we have to, meters has to cancel, so it has to go on the bottom down here. So 10 to the 6 meters on the bottom, 1 megameter on the top. Meters cancels, we push that in our calculator, and we get 7.624 times 10 to the negative fifth megameters. And as we saw in our lesson on unit conversions, these are going to be exact conversions because metric to metric, that has been defined. These are defined based on the prefixes. This is metric to metric, so that's been defined. So these, do, these are not measurements, so they do not affect the significant figures. So four significant figures went in, so we get four significant figures coming out. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. For more practice problems on metric conversions, 
be sure and come visit me at getchemistryhelp.com, and we will see you next time. Thank you.